Hey, do you know why guitars are those funny shapes? Do you know what supposedly gives Stradivarius string instruments their superior sound? Well, keep those questions in mind because they're related to our topic for today, subtractive synthesis. Subtractive synthesis is a synthesis technique based on the alteration of specified frequencies with a filter. Now, you'll find many definitions of subtractive synthesis are slightly different than mine saying a synthesis technique that's based on the removal or attenuation of specified frequencies with a filter. This is also correct, but I've tweaked my definition to clarify that in synthesis, an important role of filters is also to increase certain frequencies through resonance. More on that later, but let's think about this for a moment. In order to apply a filter, we need to first have some generated sound to filter. So actually, we often see subtractive and wavetable synthesis used together. For now, think about it like sculpting. Wavetable synthesis provides us with a big chunk of wood or stone, and then we use subtractive synthesis to chip away at the unwanted portions and carve out the sound design that we want. So, to our definition of subtractive synthesis, a good first step is to also define what a filter is. Filters are modifier modules that allow certain frequencies to pass while removing or attenuating others. Just like my coffee filter, it's important that the filter keeps some things out, the coffee grinds, while letting other things through, the liquid coffee. I'm going to go through a few different types of audio filters, including some examples, but again, I need a sound to filter, so I'm going to use a noise generator. Noise generators are generator modules that output random, non-periodic waveforms across a broad range of frequencies. There are different types of noise generators. We commonly see white noise and pink noise, but we'll save those distinctions for another day. For now, the noise generator is going to be useful for us because it's generating a broad range of frequencies that we can then affect with our filters, and clearly hear what they're doing. Let's focus on four types of filters that we'll commonly encounter in synthesis. And the good news about these filters is that their names make perfect sense. A low pass filter allows low frequencies to pass and attenuates frequencies above the cutoff frequency. Usually we can control where the cutoff frequency is, selecting where the attenuation of higher frequencies will begin. A high pass filter allows frequencies above a cutoff frequency to pass unaltered while attenuating the frequencies below it. Again, high frequencies pass, high pass filter. A band pass filter allows frequencies within a specified bandwidth to pass while attenuating frequencies outside of that bandwidth. And finally, a band reject filter, sometimes called a notch filter, attenuates frequencies within a specified bandwidth while allowing frequencies outside of that bandwidth to pass. There are lots of other kinds of filters, high shelf, low shelf, but these are four you'll commonly see in a lot of synthesis systems. Now, Filters have different slopes. Some attenuate very steeply near their cutoff frequency, some less steeply. And we can talk about how steep they are in terms of poles. More poles, more steep, more drastic reduction of the frequencies beyond the cutoff frequency. So generally a one pole filter is attenuating six decibels per octave, two poles 12, three poles 18, and four poles 24 decibels per octave. Finally, and very importantly, filters can also have resonance. Resonance is an amplitude boost of frequencies at or around the cutoff frequency. This helps emphasize the cutoff frequency, especially when performing filter sweeps, but it can also be an important part of our sound design for synthesizers. With an oscillator, a filter, and an amplifier, we've arrived at our basic synth. I used a sculpting metaphor before, but now let's go back to the questions about guitars and string instruments. 
These instrument bodies are shaped in this way, acting like filters. Based on their proportions, they emphasize certain frequencies through resonance. So we can think about the bow scraping along the string as akin to wavetable synthesis, producing the sound. And then the resonant body of the instrument boosting and attenuating frequencies is functioning like subtractive synthesis. Our voices, too, function the same way. Our vocal cords vibrate to generate the sound, like wavetable synthesis, and then we resonate them in different ways by changing the shape of our mouth or other elements of our vocal tract, subtractive synthesis. This allows us to produce a variety of different vowel sounds while sustaining a single pitch. So we can consider this basic synth, combining wavetable and subtractive synthesis, as analogous to acoustic sound-producing instruments. Thank you.